Well, tis the season, right? Not just for holidays, but for goals and wanting to improve ourselves with the new year coming. And many of us will focus on weight control. I think that's a laudable goal. <clears throat> Unfortunately, so often, one of the reasons we get it wrong is that our weight loss journey starts with hunger. Now, we don't intend for it to start with hunger, but it does anyway, because we decide to adopt a low-calorie paradigm. Now, I'm not saying calories don't matter. They do, absolutely. Energy must be accounted for. Unfortunately, though, if your dietary paradigm or your strategy for weight loss is to eat less and exercise more or to count your calories and try to cut them, hunger is likely going to win, at least if you're not accounting for the hormones. Let's look at a couple studies. <clears throat> Here is a study published in 2014 in the journal Appetite, and you can see the title, Return to Hunger Following a Relatively High Carbohydrate Breakfast is Associated with Earlier Recorded Glucose Peak in Nadir, so the peak in the... the uh, the up and the down. Now, what the study is essentially finding, what they do find, is that they gave two groups of, of subjects two different meals that were isocaloric, so same number of calories, and yet differed not in the protein that was clamped, that was the same. It differed in the amount of fat to carbohydrate. And the, the meal that had the higher carbohydrate in it, of course, had a much higher glucose and insulin peak. And they were hungrier much sooner in the morning than the other group, which got the same amount of calories, but it was lower carbohydrate. They, they ate, again, same amount of calories, but were satisfied much, much longer. This is very often the reason why someone eats a breakfast, they eat a meal, they eat a lunch, they're perfectly full, and yet two hours later, they're getting snacky. That shouldn't happen. We have plenty of energy to store. We shouldn't need to eat every two hours, but the person's starting to feel hungry. In the diet, what they ate is what was kind of, um, was their own defeat, is, is what led to their defeat. Now, I want to highlight one other paper. This paper was published in 2020, um, and it was published in the Journal of the Endocrine Society. And the title of it is, Effects of Dietary Carbohydrate Content on Circulating Metabolic Fuel Ava Availability in the Postprandial State. This one's important because I think it sheds some light on the other paper that I showed you. And it, once again, in this study, two diets, isocaloric, no difference in calories. And what they found, they measured the overall amount of caloric energy available in the blood following meals. And they found that the meal that had the biggest glucose load, or the most starches, although same amount of calories, and had the biggest insulin effect, ended up reducing the overall amount of energy that was available in the blood. And that is very likely why the brain starts to sense the hunger, because the brain isn't like the muscle or the liver or the fat cells. All of those tissues are able to store a reserve of energy that they can use later. The muscle has, for example, a lot of glucose that it's stored as glycogen. The muscle has fat that it stores in, inside of itself. Fat cells, of course, are loaded with energy. The liver is loaded with energy. So if there was an energy in the blood, they can just start relying on their own. The brain doesn't have that kind of capacity. It needs real-time energy coming to it all the time. And, and the brain also has a very, very high metabolic rate. And so if it starts to sense that nutrients are getting down in the blood, or the, the, the load, the availability is dropping, which is what that paper found, then the brain would start to stimulate hunger. It's essentially calling out to the body, hey, I'm, starting, I'm, I'm sensing that energy is getting low, and we can't get too low. If I get too low, then it's lights out. And so the way to resolve that issue is to promote or prompt eating. In other words, hunger. Hunger is the brain's signal to the body to eat. So as we're looking at the kind of weight loss journey or the weight control journey that we're all on or that we're going to be on in the new year, don't start your weight loss journey with hunger. <clears throat> and even if it's looking at calories, and I, there could be some value there, don't just try to focus on lower calorie. Consider what this is doing to your blood glucose levels and your insulin. And as I showed you in these studies, meals that are spiking your glucose more will increase your hunger much, much sooner. And you're going to want to eat again. So don't base this on hunger because hunger will usually win.